going into the elimination, um, it's anybody's game. It could just come down to, you know, the book idea or, you know, sort of how we sell it. I am just resigned to the fact that I'm going home. This is the last time I'm going to be in here. This is the last time I'm going to be in front of my three wise men, as I like to call them. If I go home today, I'll be devastated because this challenge was my favourite challenge out of the whole competition. Hi, guys. Your challenge was to create and cook three dishes that you would love to see in your first cookbook. With Donna's help, we've judged you on the dishes you put in front of us. Their suitability for a cookbook, your vision for that cookbook, but also how the dishes taste it. Two of you will go through to fight for the title of MasterChef New Zealand, but for one of you, the dream is about to end. OK, guys, let's talk about the food. Nadia, the salmon was beautifully cooked and it was a lovely dish, as was the duck. What let the two dishes down slightly for me was the presentation, especially the duck with the sauce that was sort of drizzled a little bit messily around the plate. You just can't do that. Not for a book published shot. It needs to be tidier than that. I think I've got a lot to learn with food styling. There is actually real art to it, <laughs> even though some people might think it's really easy. Your dessert could easily sit on the front cover. It looks spectacular. However, why so many flavours? You know, how many times have we said don't overcomplicate things. Because I know what you're trying to do. Right? Show us you could make a granita. Show us you could make a panna cotta with a 5% magic. If you just stop with a panna cotta, we'd all be sitting here going, wow. Yeah, my, my heart really sinks because I think, yep, yeah, I've made this mistake again to them. And it's probably going to be sending me home. Stu, while well, you're halfway there serving me peas, pea soup, it was delicious. I loved it. Scallops cooked perfectly. The bread, you spent a lot of time to make all those bread rolls, and I know you know that was a big stuff up, really, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, would the book work, crib to batch? I think a lot of people would struggle with it. The steak was a piece of grilled eye fillet, a kumara puree, and some blanched bok choy and a bit of pan juice. And there, I've just told you the recipe. Tasted good, but if you're gonna have a cookbook, you do need recipes that deserve to be written down. Otherwise, why would, why would you do it, you know? Ray's got a clear vision of what works well in a cookbook and what doesn't. Yeah, I was a little bit unsure after, after his comments. Chicken pot pie, really nice. But you missed the refinement and the techniques that would have made it a standout dish. You didn't glaze it, the pastry didn't wrap over the whole lid, the vegetables inside, too small. Why didn't you just keep them chunky? It's a chicken pot pie, chunky vegetables. Jax. Spicy, salty, and fishy. I don't know if that sells it to me with your fritters, but when you talked about it with your mum, I bought into it and, you know, I, I started to get excited about your book concept. A wedge of lemon or lime squeezed over would have just lifted it and brought it alive. The lamb shanks were a tri absolute triumph. Your flavours were great, and it was exactly like what you had described to me lamb shanks should be. Donna struggled a bit with your concept for the book, but once you started working on her and talking to her, you know, she thought you could sell snow to Eskimos. The weakest dish was the trifle. The white chocolate mousse, um, although delicious once mixed through, was a little bit grainy, and I'm not sure that that's a recipe you can put in a cookbook and be confident to leave someone to cook by themselves at home. The judges didn't like two of my three dishes, um, and it's real personal because it was my dishes. This has been an extremely tough decision because the three of you are such talented cooks, but two of you performed better than the third. Nadia. Congratulations, you're in the top two. Really? Through to the grand final. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nadia, your dishes stood out today. Perfectly cooked mostly well presented and your cookbook vision with some work could develop nicely. I don't know what to say. Um, Jax and Stu throughout this competition have been winning a lot of challenges. Neither of them picked me as their threat. I think the tables have turned. I'm really, really determined to win. Jax, Stu, it comes down to you two. And let me tell you, it is extremely close. Stu, your cookbook described a plain and simple approach the soup was delicious, 
The fillet was nice, but overall, there wasn't too much to get excited about. Maybe I didn't sort of think out my menu concept. I should have maybe started thinking about that a bit earlier. But, um, you know, all in all, I have no regrets. Jax, love the idea of your book reflecting the tapestry of your life. We quite liked some of your dishes, but it certainly wasn't your best day. Two out of three of my dishes aren't up to par. I'm thinking, oh my God, my dream is over. And I'm going home. Stu, do you think you deserve to stay in the competition? Yes, I do. Do you think you've got the talent to compete strongly in the final? Yes, absolutely. There are the fire in the valleys, you know, getting more and more. And um, if given the chance to get to the final, you know, I'm, I'm hungry for it. So you think Jack should go home? Uh, for me to go to the final? Yes. Jax, how about you? Can you win MasterChef? I know I can win MasterChef. I can feel it. You've both been fantastic competitors, but there's room for only one of you in the grand final. Ultimately, it comes down to whose dishes show the most promise. Jax, you're through to the final, but you'll seriously need to lift your game another notch for next week. I am feeling completely and utterly amazed, surprised, relieved, excited, frightened. I, I could go on and on and on. Stu, I'm sorry. That means you're leaving the competition. Yes, it does. Stu, you seem really happy about that. Uh, no, if you, I guess if you don't sort of smile, you, you cry. So it's yeah. a stiff upper lip, is it? Absolutely. You've been one of this competition's most consistent performers. Stu, it's been an absolute pleasure. I especially loved your curry and your work at Euro. You have the makings of a great chef. I hope it's been a great experience for you. It's been uh, just a life-changing experience and uh, oh, I've had a great time. I've learned lots of things, learned patience, uh, friendships and a whole lot of, you know, good food. I had Simon cook me meals um, at his restaurant at Euro. It was fantastic. Clooney's, um, Josh Emmett's restaurant. Um, you know, all those things are just, you know, amazing and, and, and what I thought would be out of my reach. Stu, you've been a great competitor. You showed determination, drive and focus to get this far. Your work in my kitchen and at Euro showed me that you're a natural, but it's now time to leave the MasterChef kitchen. Anytime you want to come and have a go in the kitchen, give me a call, mate. Will do. Thank you. I have no regrets. I guess I'm not a person that looks back and oh, I could have done this, I could have done that. Got to get it, mate. Work really hard to get this far, and you know, to show that uh, you know, just good on us, hard work can get you this far. You know, it's a it's a good feeling. I'm ten times uh, better than what, when I came into this competition. So uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure I'll have uh, you know the family and that knocking on the door and ask me to cook them a few feeds. Next time on MasterChef New Zealand, the grand final. Every dish you've cooked has led to this day. In a two-hour special, our two finalists, Jax and Nadia, face four epic challenges. One of you will be New Zealand's next MasterChef. With so much at stake... That scares me a little. ...disaster can strike at any moment.